That's for tomorrow, gentlemen. For today, remember the Alamo! Battle of the Alamo came during the Texas War for Independence from Mexico. It lasted 13 days as a group of Texan volunteer soldiers occupied a former Franciscan mission near the present-day city of San Antonio. The mission was called the Alamo. Spanish settlers built the mission San Antonio de Valero in 1718. It was used to house missionaries and Native American converts until 1793. In the early 1800s, Spanish troops were stationed there. It was located in a groove of cottonwood trees. The soldiers called this place El Alamo, which means cottonwood. The fort traded hands a few times, Spanish, then rebel, then Mexican, during the Mexican War for Independence from Spain. When Stephen Austin showed up with some 300 families from the U.S., the Spanish government allowed them to stay. More people from the U.S. began to migrate to the Texas Territory. Well, when the settlers were beginning to outnumber the Mexican residents, things started to change. The settlers wanted statehood or liberty for Texas. Santa Ana, who was a politician and a soldier, became the dictator in Mexico. He wanted the settlers to stop coming and took measure to crush these rebels. Santa Ana had classified the rebel Texans as pirates and would not take any prisoners of war. One time, he actually sent soldiers to go get a cannon that he lent them to defend against Native Americans. When the settlers saw the army coming to get that cannon, they turned the cannon right back on them. The Texas Army was now under the command of Sam Houston. The Texan volunteers drove the Mexican troops out of Santa Ana. They then occupied the Alamo. The Alamo was commanded by James Neal. He had about 100 volunteers with him and was asking for more men and supplies. Sam Houston realized it was hard to defend and ordered Colonel James Bowie to gather the 19 or so cannons that were there and destroy the Alamo. He arrived in January 1836 with about 30 men. He quickly realized that the cannons would not be able to be removed before Santa Ana arrived. His goal was to delay Santa Ana while Sam Houston built up his army. Colonel William Travis arrived in February with a small cavalry. Davy Crockett, the former congressman and frontiersman from Tennessee, arrived with about 14 volunteers. As Santa Ana was approaching, he was forcing inexperienced Mexicans into service for the government. Sam Houston said Texians would whip 10 to 1 with their artillery. I fight you with one poor tied behind my back. As Santa Ana reached San Antonio, the residents fled. Santa Ana raised a blood red flag which signaled no quarter. Travis and Bowie disagreed after Travis fired a cannon in response. But after they found out the surrender would be unconditional, they then agreed and refired the cannon. Travis sent a very famous letter asking for help throughout Texas. Colonel James Fanning was 90 miles away. He was to send 320 men, four cannons, and supply wagons. They disagreed on how this all ended, but they only got one mile up the road and returned. The Gonzales Ranging Company, led by George Kimball, and Travis's own courier got sick of waiting for Fanning and left out on their own. When they got to the Alamo, the Texans, thinking they were Mexican soldiers, fired on them. After one person was wounded, they began to curse in English. 32 men now entered the fort under darkness. Davy Crockett and others were able to get a few more Fanning's men. Now the Texans numbered about 200. The Mexican forces in San Antonio were about 2,000 or so. However, a thousand more arrived. Now there are about 3,000 or more Mexican troops compared to the 200 Texans that were in the Alamo. It's really unbelievable, but the Mexican cannon shot over 200 cannonballs into the Alamo Plaza. The Texans were very resourceful. They reused many of those cannonballs and shot them right back at them. The Mexican troops got about 1,000 yards an inch closer every day, which was now a 13-day siege, which started on February 23rd. On the evening of March 4th, a local woman, likely to be Jim Bowie's own cousin-in-law, Juana Navarro Asbury, approached Santa Ana to negotiate a surrender for the Alamo occupiers. According to many historians, this visit probably increased Santa Ana's impatience as they were waiting for more cannons to arrive. He now let his officers know that they would attack on the morning of March 6th. At 10 p.m. on March 5th, the Mexican artillery ceased their bombardment. Santa Ana was counting on the exhausted Texans to sleep. This was the first uninterrupted rest many of them had seen since the siege began. 
At 5.30 a.m. on March 6th, about 1,800 Mexican troops silently approached the garrison. 500 troops were used to stop fleeing Texians and Mexican soldiers alike. The Mexican soldiers were not allowed to wear an overcoat because it could impede their movement, even though it was really cold outside. Three sentinels were killed in their sleep. Now get this, the silence was broken by shouts of Viva Santa Ana! and the buglers were blowing their horns. They were marching in columns coming in from all sides. As the noise woke the Texans, Travis rushed to his post yelling, Come on, boys! The Mexicans are upon us, and we'll give them hell! Now get this one. At the beginning of the battle, the first Mexican troops were in tight columns. The untrained soldiers marching in these columns fired blindly. They were shooting the men right in front of them. The Texans did not have any canisters shot and filled their cannons with any metal they could find. Door hinges, nails, chopped up horseshoes, essentially turning the cannon to giant shotguns. After the first two attacks failed, the third attack on the north wall was successfully breached. Texans left the north wall as cannons from the south fired on the Mexican troops. Unfortunately, the gunners were overtaken and the Mexican army took the 18-pound cannon. Men along the west wall headed for the San Antonio River. They put up a good fight but were all killed. Some men left the cattle pens and they were fighting for their lives. They headed over the low wall and got to the open prairie. The Mexican cavalry came after them. I'm Ron Dickinson and his 11-man artillery crew gave cover to no avail as the fleeing men were overtaken. Dickinson's crew fired into the Mexican soldiers as they entered the chapel. They lost their lives putting up a tremendous fight. Possibly the last Texian to die in the battle was Jacob Walker. He might have been wounded and ran to a corner. He was bayoneted right in front of Susanna Dickinson, the wife of Almiron Dickinson. Let's talk about their three leaders. Legend has it that as Santa Ana was approaching, Colonel William Travis drew a line in the sand and asked those that would stay to step across the line. This is a really cool story, but maybe not entirely true. Although he may have given anyone who wished to leave that opportunity. If anyone wishes to depart under the white flag of surrender, you may do so now. You have that right. Travis was accompanied by his slave, Joe, who fought right beside him. Colonel William Travis was one of the first people killed as he leaned over the wall to take a shot. It is believed that he used his sword against the Mexican troops as he was dying. Jim Bowie somehow got really sick and was laid up in bed when the last day came. There are a few theories on how he spent his last moments. He may have died in his bed or have been bayoneted by soldiers and dragged out of the room. Most believe he went down fighting with his famous knife and some pistols. Davy Crockett, yes, the Davy Crockett who's been portrayed in movie and television was a pretty famous and charismatic person when he arrived at the Alamo. I'm David Crockett, fresh from the backwoods. I got the fastest horse, the prettiest sister, the surest rifle, and the ugliest dog in Tennessee. <laughs> he was great at keeping the peace between Travis and Bowie as they were at odds with each other. A frontiersman who was used to fighting apparently might have been one of the last to go down. There are several theories and witnesses to what might have happened. He might have been killed during fighting. According to William Travis's slave Joe, he might have been one of the best fighters because he had the most dead bodies around him. Another soldier said that he and a few others were captured, taken to Santa Ana, and killed right then in front of him. Another witness said that he was taken and executed at the Alamo. The mayor of San Antonio wanted to meet Davy Crockett before the battle. After the battle, he had witnessed that he saw Davy Crockett's dead body inside. There are too many witnesses with differing accounts to know exactly what happened. Nonetheless, he fought bravely and did not survive the Alamo. When it was all over, about 600 Mexican soldiers were killed and about 400 wounded. All the defenders except for two were killed. Around 15 to 20 people that were there in the Alamo survived. William Travis's slave Joe, who was shot and bayoneted, was one of the only adults to survive the fight. Bigado Guerrero, who had deserted from the Mexican army several months before, convinced the Mexican soldiers that he had been taken prisoner by the Texans. He was spared. Jim Bowie's freeman Sam was also spared but was thought not to fought in the battle. The day after the battle, Santa Ana interviewed each non-combatant individual. Impressed with Susanna Dickinson, Santa Ana offered to adopt her infant daughter Angelina and have her educated in Mexico City. Dickinson refused the offer. Well, here's some strange things for you. Legend has it that Jim Bowie may have brought treasure with him. 
Some accounts say that he was loaded down with fortune in silver and gold called the San Saba treasure. It's said to be worth millions of dollars. It was supposed to finance the Texas Revolution for independence from Mexico. Knowing that they're going to be overtaken soon, Bowie had it dropped in the well in the plaza of the Alamo. Some say this can't be because it might have tainted the water, but I've never heard of silver and gold tainting water before. Some of the grounds have been surveyed and excavated, but no treasure has been found yet, just pottery and other artifacts. Well, we've been hearing a lot about tunnels lately, right? There are rumors about hidden tunnels going from the chapel to the San Antonio River, but they have not yet been verified. Here's two quick unusual facts about famous people. Musician Phil Collins, yes, Phil Collins of the band Genesis is a huge fan. He fell in love with his inspirational story as a young boy watching on Disney and different movies. Collins has collected and donated hundreds of artifacts and documents to the Alamo. Ozzy Osbourne, the Prince of Darkness, never did urinate on the Alamo like it was thought. But he was arrested and banned because he desecrated the Alamo Centitaph, which is a monument to the Alamo. Well, don't worry, all has been forgiven. He was gladly welcomed and has revisited the site. Well, vastly outnumbered the Alamo's 200 defenders commanded by Bowie, Travis, and Crockett held out for 13 days. The men that fought in this famous fight and its survivors were truly brave indeed. We'll keep the videos coming here on Strange History. Hey, check out this video on the Bermuda, Alaskan, and Dragon's Triangle. Don't be scared.